Welcome to episode 27 of Talk of the Boat. I'm your host, Robert Yazbek. Uh, today, I've got the honor of uh, speaking with Chef Joe Campbell, executive chef for three of Steamboat's most exclusive restaurants, Mambo Italiano, Besame, and Yamp Valley Kitchen. Uh, chef Joe has been living in Colorado for, excuse me, been living in Route County for over nine years and started collaborating with Mambo's five years ago. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, contribution to the culinary scene yeah, in Steamboat. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for being here. Yeah, happy to be here. Excellent. Uh, so give us a little background on Joe. What uh, brought you to the Yampa Valley and uh, how'd you land the executive chef position with Hannah? Oh man, it's, uh, it's been a long, it's been a long ride. So I mean, grew up in Minneapolis, Minnesota and mm -hmm. was always like, wanted to help out mom and grandma in the kitchen. You know, it's kind of how I yeah. got started there. And then when I got a little bit older, you know, I always joke with people that the real reason that I got into cooking was to impress girls. You know? Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, I thought that was a good way to, to do it. And I, I got into restaurants as a young kid and um, just kind of stuck with it. And um, I don't know, about 10 years ago, um, I was working at this place called Hot Dish in Minneapolis. And the chef there was talking about doing seasonal work up in Alaska. And I was like, that sounds really cool. You know, I'd like to get out of this city mm -hmm. um, and ended up getting a job in Glacier National Park um, in Montana nice. and then started doing summers there. And then I did winters in Steamboat and was the chef up at Ragnar's. And I went okay. back to Glacier for the summer, then back. And then I ended up taking over Hazy's. <clears throat> um, nice. Redid Hazy's for a little bit and then took off to Telluride. Uh, did a summer at the Hotel Madeline in Telluride. Um, and then it just wasn't really working out. So started to wanting to come back to Steamboat and Hannah had an ad out on Craigslist that I responded to and we started chatting and then came up here and the rest is history. You know, I, yeah. she hired me right on the spot and we've had an amazing relationship ever since and we've done, done a lot of really great things together and yeah, it's been, been five years now actually. So that's great. So things are going good. Heck yeah. Good for you. Those are three of our favorite restaurants in town. So I mean, Thank you, you landed awesome. at a great spot and uh, yeah, I mean, my kids love them. My wife loves them, you know, so it's pretty, pretty neat that you're, you know, all three of those is awesome. Yeah. Um, so where'd you get most of your culinary training? Oh man, I've been very fortunate. You know, I, I did go to school, um, in Minneapolis. I went to Le Cordon Bleu, which nice. I don't know if it wasn't the greatest experience, you know, but oh, yeah. it did set me on the right path to, you know, to eventually be where I am today. Okay. Um, <clears throat> ended up getting into some really nice restaurants. In Minneapolis, I did some brief training under a chef, Tim McKee, who's a James of Beard Award winning chef. Nice. First one out of Minneapolis. Um, so that was really great to learn from him. And then after that, um, I worked at a place called Hot Dish, which was a premier restaurant in Minneapolis with uh, Chef Landon Schoenfeld. And he was like a really outside of the box kind of thinker, you know, okay. as when it came to food. Like he, he was like, he would look at like a carrot and be like, how can we do this like 12 different ways? What, nice. how many different things can we do with this one ingredient? You know, that really kind of opened up Pandora's box for me, you know, and I really drove the creativity um, that I've come to have. And so then after that, you know, I, once I got to like the glacier um, scene, I met a lot of kids from all over the world. And I ended up traveling over to Singapore and like Japan and Vietnam wow. and doing a lot of training over, or doing a lot of traveling over there. Um, then I was, did a brief stay, like I lived in Thailand for about six months and um, I trained under a chef of the royal family of Thailand. I had, wow. uh, I got lucky. I happened to be uh, dating her granddaughter and she was like, hey, my, my grandma is a chef of the royal family. Like, would you like to meet her and train with her? I was like, are you kidding? I was, wow. like, I was like, absolutely, you know? Heck so, yeah. so I did that and you know, that was really great. And then, I mean, I just, after I left Minneapolis, I mean, I kind of, I've just been on my own and, you know, finally doing my own thing and nice. just, you know, self-taught and I've read a, countless books, watched countless hours of YouTube videos and, you know, just scouring the internet, just, you know, just always learning every day, just trying to be better Love. than yep. I was yesterday, Heck you know? Yeah. So that's that's pretty much That's incredible, much man. It there. That's a serious uh, track record and, and uh, experience, man. It's awesome. Good for you. Um, so you're obviously very passionate about it, um, yeah. you know, and you've been doing it a long time. What what continues to motivate you and uh, inspire you? 
I just, you know, I just really love how, I mean, people are really waking up and caring about their food and where it's coming from more so than ever. Yeah. You know, like you look at 20 years ago, I mean, people thought Applebee's was a good restaurant. You right. Know, and we all know that that's not the case. And, yeah. But, um, you know, I just, <laughs> I really just, I, we'll, I we'll love, cut that part out. Yeah, I probably can't. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> um, anyways, no, I just really love, you know, like pushing the boundaries <laughs> and like just kind of coming up with new things. <laughs> And, you know, I've become like a teacher at this point. So I'm teaching yeah. the next generation of, of young cooks that are coming up. And, and that's really fun to watch them grow and watch them really take on the information and, and run with it and better themselves, you know. And when yeah. they do well, then I do well. Like, I'm only as good as my, my team is. You right. Know? And without a good team, then I'm, I have nothing. Yeah. You know, so that really pushes me. And, you know, I just, I just like making people happy through food, too. You know, it's like yeah. that instant gratification of you know somebody is just like wow that was just that's so memorable i'm gonna remember this meal for like you know forever and then they keep coming back so yeah so that's that's a pretty big main <clears throat> motivating factor for sure that's huge man that's awesome i uh I, i've got some context here too i used to cook quite a bit i wasn't professionally trained but um i've always said you know people will always pay other people to cook for them right right and it's just yeah it's such an experience you know cooking is fun but then you get to eat the food and you get to see yeah. the you know, expression and reaction from the people for that sure. you cook for and all that. So yeah, it really is a, a neat thing, man. That's, that's awesome that you have that passion and the teaching's huge. I mean, it's, yeah, you know, it's, it's people so need important. that mentor and that teacher, you know, yep. in that business for sure. That's great. Um, so tell us about your, uh, you know, more, more like your style. What's, what's your culinary mission and style, if you will. I don't I guess I probably broad and vast. That, yeah, it's pretty broad. At, but, I mean, I just I really no. like to try to think outside of the box and you know, I try to take like classics that have been done and and reinvent them quite a bit, you know. That's really fun to me and just seeing, you know, what the brain comes up with and I I'll be laying in bed at night and like I have a little notepad that I just all jot stuff down that I'm, you know, thinking of before I go to sleep. And yeah, because if you don't, then you wake up and you're like, oh, what was that idea I had last mm -hmm. night? You know, and so I do I do a lot of that. It's just always just moving forward and just, you know, keeping up with the trends. And especially now, especially with the way of the world now is, you know, really utilizing as much local stuff as we can. I mean, that goes right. for all three restaurants. The Yampa Valley Kitchen is, you know, 100 percent driven by that. Yeah. You know, but the other ones, we try we try to incorporate as much of that uh, as we can. As that's well. awesome. Cool. So, yeah, that's a good segue. So tell us about the three restaurants and their and their different styles. Yeah. So it all started with Mambo's, mm -hmm. um, you know, got hired by Hannah right on the spot. First interview. Um, that was five years ago and started there. And when she when she hired me, she, you know, was basically she's <laughs> like, I'm looking for somebody that can run multiple outlets. And I was like, well, nice. I've done a little bit of that before. Like, you know, the hotels had three restaurants, basically, you know, that I oversaw all three of those places. So I was kind right. of like, well, I'm, I think I can do that. She's like, yeah, it's, you know, it's going to be a ways down the road, but, you know, definitely want to open another restaurant. And then two months later, she's like, oh, I bought a restaurant and we're going <laughs> to open this restaurant. I nice. still try to get my, you know, bearing straight at Mambo's. Right. You know? <laughs> oh, um, God, yeah. So two I was months like, in. All right. And I was like, well, here we go. Um, so December, um, what was that, 2017? 2016 maybe anyways mm -hmm. um started digging into the concept and you know hannah comes in one day and she's like you know we're gonna do latin food there's um you know like a heavy emphasis on like you know spain and like south america and because <clears throat> nobody was there wasn't anything really like that going on in town and yep. to be honest i mean i didn't know a lot about it and you know it took a lot of research and um the latino community here that works for me has helped me out so much and taught me so much and i'm Heck yeah. so grateful for you know everything i've learned from them and i mean i'm talking i'll ask the dishwasher how their grandmother made yeah. something you know because <laughs> nice. that's you know the grandmas yeah. you know they're the ones that are going to teach you you know the, the right way to do things yeah, absolutely or, you know, the best way and um so we did best May. we opened that 20 that march of 2017 um, so just had their four year birthday back in March. Nice. Um, and we had only been open for like six months and, you know, a representative from the James Beard foundation happened to come in there and ate there and loved it and loved yeah. the atmosphere and, um, decided to invite us out to New York city to, to cook at the James Beard house. 
That's which incredible. is a, you know a very like high honor and like you know one of my proudest of achievements of my career. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, so we did that, and that was amazing. And um, then all of a sudden, um, COVID hits, and we had already been talking about opening Yampa Valley Kitchen. So we were like, well, we're going to do it anyways. And the Ampa Valley Kitchen just had their two-year birthday, July 4th, this summer. Nice. Um, so we opened that place, and man, that was the most challenging restaurant I've ever worked in or opened in my life. You really? Know, the, there's like a very small amount of storage space. You know, mm -hmm. so there's two services, breakfast and lunch, and, you know, we had a hard time with having enough room for the, like, the prep and the produce and everything because uh, gotcha. we didn't have anywhere to put all this stuff huh. so we were basically like starting over every day with the prep and Damn. it was it was tough man you know and there's a line out the door we opened july 4th like what were we thinking oh there's just a line out the door every yeah. single day and i think i probably cried a few times <laughs> <You know? laughs> that was a, that was a tough summer but we, we pulled it off you know and it's it's grown to be incredibly successful. I mean, it, we've really got it dialed in now, and it's it's going awesome. So that's great. And the <laughs> you know so, Mambo's you know we did try to focus on like upscale Italian like mm -hmm. kind of a little outside of the box Italian food. Yep. Besame like Latin fusion in you know incorporating global flavors, you know from not just the Latin zones, but you know we bring in some like Southeast Asian flair and kind of fuse that with some of the Latin stuff. Um, yeah. And then the Apple Valley Kitchen is, you know, the organic farm to table as locally as possible as we as we can. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. And they're all doing awesome, man. They're all doing great. And really, really, really proud. That's awesome. I mean, they're three of the best restaurants in town. No questions. Thanks. Thanks. Yam Valley that. Kitchen. That's our favorite lunch spot. Um, Besame. You go in there. You don't even feel like you're in Steamboat. You know what right. I mean? The ambiance <laughs> and the food. Yeah. You, you totally transform, right? You feel like you're yeah. in a city or Vegas or something. And uh, Mambo, man, that's like, to me, that's like home cooking Italian. Like I just love the flavors and stuff. There. Yeah, it's had a good, you know, it's been yeah. around, what, over over 20 years, I think at this point. Yeah. It's definitely uh, come a long ways, you know. No question. So uh, tell us about Yen Valley Kitchen relationship with the Ag Alliance, how that works, and uh, you know, what local ranchers and stuff you guys work with to get produce and, yeah. and protein. Um, so, the Ag Alliance, um, we've really partnered up with a lot more this summer than before. Um, we started doing some Ag Alliance dinners with them. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have one this Thursday night, which is sold out, which is pretty awesome. At um, Yamba Valley Kitchen? Or... At Yamba Valley okay, Kitchen. Okay, yeah. And then mm -hmm. Hannah just did one a couple of weeks ago, sold out as well. Everybody loved it, you know, um, and Hannah's, yep. Hannah's a great chef too. Um, we, we, we were at that one. It was really good. Oh, nice. Yeah. Perfect. It was awesome. Yeah. So, so we started to do these dinners with them, um, and you know, we just they've been helping us kind of source some of the local products and stuff, and we're planning on partnering up with them even more. But that's a project I probably can't really talk about at the moment. Um, there'll be more information coming about that soon. Nice. Um, but yeah, they, they've been great. You know, just helping us source you know local produce and local proteins, and oh, it's it's a really good relationship. What was the Perfect. second part of the Certain question? ranchers that you guys are partnering with on that? Oh man, we have we use so many ranchers, and I'm really stoked about it. Nice. You know, we really try our best, like I said, to to utilize all the as much local stuff as we as we can at all three places. Mm -hmm. I mean, we anywhere from let's see, more local uh, Moon Hill Dairy. We're getting cheeses out of there. Um, Mountain View Farms, we're getting pork, Heart Diamond Ranch beef, Davis, Davis Farms vegetables, Be Grateful Farms, we're getting veggies and salad greens. Nice. Um, we utilize <laughs> Elkstone Farms, Bluebird Farms. Um, we use Doug at Bread bake, uh, the Bakery. Um, he does bread for all three of our places. Great. Um, we use La Jolla Dolce, Hayden Farm Fresh. Um, you know, we just we just really try to use as much as, as we can. And, that's incredible. And all their, uh, and all that's their not products. easy, right? No, that's not easy to manage. I got that's a lot a of phone list. calls. I got a lot of phone calls to make every day. You know? yeah, yeah, that's a lot harder than uh, getting everything from Cisco, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and you know, and then when we do use bigger companies, like say What Chefs Want or Shamrock or any of those kind of uh, distributors, we we try to get their stuff that's 
Colorado made and source, right. even when we're using them. Nice. You know, we use like 7X Ranch out of Longmont, which is like the, the United States is like some of their premier Wagyu in the country. Um, so like your steak over at <clears throat> um, Besame and YDK, yeah. that's that's from coming from 7X Ranch. Perfect. So we use a lot, man, and I, I love it. It's, it's really great. That's exciting, man. That's a, that's a big daunting task, right? To yeah. manage all that, I'm sure, but congrats, that's exciting. Um, so you told us a little bit about the, the cooking at the James Beard house, uh, oh, yeah. in New York city. That's, that's huge, man. What an honor. What just tell us about that a little bit and, and what that meant to you. Yeah. So when they, the server came back at best to tell me that somebody from James Beard was at the bar and wanted to talk to me. I was like, I was like, don't lie to me. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. Are you kidding? <laughs> I was like, and then my second question was, is he pissed? You yeah, know? yeah. Like, do we screw anything up? Right. She's like, no, like he loved it. Like he, he wants, he wants me to come on and chat with you. And so we started chatting and uh, Hannah wasn't there. And he's like, well, I want to meet with you and the owners tomorrow. So we went and met uh, Jeff Black, uh, who, who runs that. Um, and we all sat down and got to talking. And then, you know, he invited us out to the James Beard House in New York City. And heck yeah. And we were on our way. Uh, we did a lot of, um, took a lot of planning. Uh, we did a couple like pre-run dinners, so to speak, you know, just kind of getting all the kinks worked out and you know, it was a little nerve wracking because we'd made a lot of stuff here and then had to overnight ship it oh, you know, wow. all packed with like dry ice and stuff to make sure Crazy. That we were going to get all of our stuff. Yeah. Um, so we get to New York city and we've got, I think four or five days to prep and then to run around the city and find everything that we're going to need for this dinner which was really cool. I mean, New York City is an awesome place. And, yeah. You know, we had a lot of fun out there and we <clears throat> were doing a lot of prep at one of Hannah's old restaurants there. She's on a restaurant there oh, uh, interesting. called Dish. Okay. Um, so we were prepping everything for it there. And then the night of the dinner, you know, then all of a sudden the pressure's on, right? And, and it was sold out. We weren't, we didn't know if it was going to sell out or what to expect. And Damn. Um, we had a lot of press there. Um, there we got a lot of great write ups about yep. the dinner. Um, but it was nerve wracking, you know, like oh, you're, you're just in the kitchen is tiny. Really? Right. Like you can fit like maybe <laughs> eight people in there. Like it's, it's the kitchen is probably like the size of this room. Okay. You know, it's pretty small. So anyway, so we started going and I noticed that this curry that I had made was, it had gone sour. Oh no. And we only have, this is like two hours before show time. So I'm like, I'm going to go in the bathroom and throw up. I'm like, I'll be back in a minute. You know, like oh, my no. nerves are just like, you gotta be kidding me. And then, um, I get somebody to go to one of the bodegas, like right down the street. And they actually had everything I needed to make this curry from scratch. Really? And I ended up just making it on the, on the fly at the very end. And Damn. it turned out great, you know, thank yeah. God. And you know, some of the ingredients we kind of, you know, they had, they had some <laughs> stuff for us at the James Beard house to, to utilize too. So, okay. so that was good. Um, but then once dinner time came around, you know, just doing pre-shift was probably the most like nerve wracking part. Cause I have to do the plate ups and show the servers, everything. I felt like I'm taking too long, you know, and then it's be, all being live streamed. Oh, wow. You know, there's restaurants in town here that had it up on, no on their TVs, Yeah. you know, while we're there, because everybody's cheering us on here, here at home. Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. Um, and then when service started, though, then it was just really smooth and it went awesome. And it was, it was a great, great night. And that's you know, it's a memory that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. You know? And, and yeah, it was, man. it was awesome. We all walked out of there with our heads held high and yeah. You know, and shoulders up and, you know, feeling good. And it was, it was amazing, man. It was experience of a lifetime. Good for, sure. for you, man. Congrats. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so Heck much. Yeah, that's exciting. Good deal. So now I know how really lucky we are to have you in town and <laughs> the culinary <laughs> experience, man. Um, so we got potentially uh, kind of new news, breaking news. Yamp Valley Kitchen's opening for dinner. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah. So um, tell us about that. It, When's that coming and what do we have always, to look forward um, to? We've always, you know, I would say that when we did our first um, Steamboat Wine Festival dinner there, okay. uh, right after we opened, we had the place, all the, the crystal and the stemware and the table set, and it was dark in there and the, the lighting dim. And it was just so romantic in there that mm -hmm. we were just looking around. We were like, we need to open this place for dinner, yeah. you know? And um, so two years later, um, I think it's finally going to come to fruition here. Uh, we are making moves 
um, with decorating and getting all everything that we need to we're building a new walk-in outside so that we can actually have the ah, cooler go. and freezer space that we need Perfect. to actually be able to pull this off um, doing some slight little alterations and in the dining room and whatnot and it'll be the same farm to table experience um, we're looking to do like elevated comfort food nice um so it, it's gonna be awesome man i'm super excited heck yeah so breakfast lunch and dinner then breakfast lunch and dinner that's huge and so that's anything from the menu quite the operation yeah that's huge. That? yeah that's a big deal for a restaurant uh, anything from the menu you can share for for dinner time that we could get excited about I'm looking to do this uh, basically a deconstructed, totally outside of the box tater tot hot dish. That mm. was going to be pretty, pretty mind blowing. Nice. So excellent. That's 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 one of the things I'm looking forward to for sure. Um, there might be some fried chicken on there. Beautiful. You know, some old classic desserts that nobody really seems to do anymore. So neat. Real old home style kind of stuff, but just reinvented and done. In a new Love way. it, man. Put me on the list. Yeah, I'll be there. We're excited. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so I know you guys are uh, community oriented. Um, what special events or community offerings can we look forward to coming up? Um, for now, I, I got, like I said, I got the dinner on Thursday. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's sold out, you know, for the, for everybody that would like to come. But yeah, we plan to keep on doing those kind of dinners with the Ag Alliance um, okay. when we can. Um, we have wine festival coming up. Um, we're doing a dinner, um, with a very famous chef out of Chicago, um, which I'm drawing a blank on his name. You probably have to cut this part out. Um, <laughs> Jonathan Sawyer. Jonathan okay. Sawyer, actually. Nice. Big time. Big time chef. Um, I think he just got done doing a show for the Food Network. Um, so we'll be doing that event. So tickets are still available for that, and that's going to be a banger. And my buddy Tim Fisher, who's James Beard nominated chef for James Beard Award, um, good friend of mine and mentor of, of mine, We'll be coming out to do that dinner with us so that's going to be a really cool dinner very nice um so yeah just for that i mean for now just doing the events when we can i mean it's sometimes it's hard because you know if we got employees dropping out or sick or somebody quits or you know and then i'm tied up and hannah's tied up then it makes us hard to like really do extracurricular events you know we right. we, we love to do them and we try to do as many of them as we can but it just all depends on <clears throat> what's going on yeah 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 I mean, it's hard enough to run one restaurant, much less three, much less, you right. know, farm to table and, court, you know, coordinate with all those right. ranchers and stuff. So yeah. that's huge. Um, that's exciting, though. So where do we go to find all that information? You guys have a website where all the events and stuff are posted? Um, I don't think any of the events are posted. Um, we just we announce them all through, you know, social media. So, okay. you know, either the best of my Facebook or Instagram or YBK Facebook, Instagram. It's like when those kind of events come up, we usually put them out there first. Perfect. Um, and nothing on the website though. Okay. So I'm stay tuned for social media. Yeah. Social media. Okay. Follow, follow us on there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you get all the, you get all the intimate details. Every restaurant's got a page. Every restaurant's got a page. Both okay. Facebook and uh, Instagram and uh, probably Twitter too, but I don't, I don't think we use that very much. Okay. Excellent. Love it, man. Congrats on all your success. Great yeah, to meet thanks. you. Thanks so much. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, no, it's been awesome. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Talk of the Boat. Uh, if you enjoy this content, please subscribe on whatever uh, platform you're, you're viewing, like, and uh, share with somebody else you think might enjoy it. We'd really appreciate that. Also, if you have any real estate related questions that you'd like us to answer on the air, uh, please send those to us uh, by email, text, or direct message. And as always, if you have any real estate questions or needs that we can help you with, please reach out. Thank you.